Yes, welcome to the Jamaica Young Police Channel. To our loyal viewers, subscribers and Patreon members. At the channel, we are a group of law-abiding citizens who believe in the rule of law and respect the rights of every citizen. But not the ones who do not subscribe to such behavior. We do believe in and support preemptive strikes because they save lives. This is a logical conclusion because preemptive strikes save lives and prevent the further loss of lives. We are all about saving lives at this channel. We at the channel aid criminals with a passion and do not want them over here. We do not want your views, your subscriptions, your likes or your comments. Please go elsewhere where the red carpet is waiting for you. Over here, we want you to go to prison or the departure lounge at Madden. Yeah, so if this is the first time here at the Jamaica Young Police Channel, we highly recommend subscribing to stay updated with our latest content. Hit the subscription button above, click the bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever we at the Jamaica Young Police Channel release a video. Remember that this channel is not an entertainment channel. You know, entertainment channels give you a hybrid between 10 to 15 minutes. This is not an entertainment channel. So you have to go elsewhere if you want entertainment. Remember to give this video a thumbs up because you will find it helpful and informative. Please remember to share the video with your girlfriend, your boyfriend, mama, papa, side chick or side man. And tell them to tell a friend about the Jamaica Young Police Channel. You can join the Patreon squad. By doing so, you will gain access to exclusive content that cannot be played on YouTube due to various restrictions. To unlock this untapped collection of videos, click the link in the description box below. Joining our Patreon community allows you to explore content that complies with laws, rules and regulations while avoiding disruption to our channel's functionalities. Douglas Chambers, who was killed by PMP criminal organization members and it, it came from the top and to date the person, our person who have given, given that order has not been arrested and charged for that murder. So you can go to Patreon and you'll be able to see the face and name of those person. So thanks for your continued support and we look forward to providing you with exceptional content. So moving on to today's video. I have served in the United States military and it's one of the greatest military in the world. I'm here to report to you. As you know that you know we have been doing a series about you know lies and facts and all those things. But you have to understand you know, that um, lies spread faster than wildfire and the sound of speed and light. That's all lies travel. And you know so where you to report um, a man sentenced to death for 14 in a mosque during Ramadan, a Pakistani man. His name is Muhammad Al Wahhabim and he's 33 and he suffered from chronic flatulence, a rare medical condition. So as you know, you know, Islam Islam is not only a conservative religion, but Islam is a religion where they have the Sharia law and the Sharia law they don't play with it. It's, um, it goes right back to the New Testament if you are somebody who believes in the the uh, Bible. So that's how you know um, their laws are from it's archaic, but it works in their culture. You understand? And these are people that they believe in their culture, and you know you cannot buy them. These are people who live in abject poverty in any Muslim world. Most of these Muslim country, just like everywhere in the world where you have poor and rich, and it's the same way in these countries too. But these people are committed to their religion and the rule of law in their country and that's their beliefs and their culture you cannot there's nothing that you can do to change these people's mind and, they, and that's how they operate it you know but we know the international order is designed to understand in which um, you're not gonna see where you know people living in so-called first world country where people are suffering because 
when they're talking about suffering and people suffering like crazy is in the United States of America. Where I'm living, you understand? Because you have a lot of, when you're talking about homeless people, I am from a third world country in which my people who are homeless in Jamaica, not because they want to be, that they have to be homeless, but some of them just want to be on the street. Because in Jamaica, people are, you know, for a lot of times, you know, then their family will allow them to stay there. And, you know, so, you have to understand that's how capitalism works. And, you know, capitalism is the thing that they impose, they, you know, it's a, it's a money system. It's, it's a system where, right now, capitalism has no heart. And you got to understand what is going on right now in the United States of America. It's inflation stuff and all kind of thing. Everyone is crying man, because of the cost of living. So, I am going to try to take your, your mind off all of those things to tell you about this thing now, about this uh, Muhammad al Wahhabi who was sentenced to death for farting in a mosque during um, Ramadan. I know Ramadan is the most important religious festi festival for Muslims. And the judge in the trial of um, Muhammad declared that he had indisposed people of faith and evil caused 53 people at one time to leave the mosque during a prayer. And his act is a blasphemous act, which means it is a sinful act, unforgivable according to Muslim law, and which should be punished according to Allah's way. And you know, you know, based on Sharia law, and you know that their laws, you know, it has nothing to do with Western beliefs or Western culture, it's their culture. So the judge was lenient and admitted many experts in the region as he gave the convicted man a choice to be beheaded or stoned to death. So why uh, Mohammed <laughs> what's it what's the chance of somebody in the Muslim world have a name like Chris, George or Michael? No. One thing with these people, they, they don't digress man or deviate from their Muslim name. And majority of the people in the Arab world your name is Mohammed. So Mohammed, you know, the judge was lenient with him. You understand? Giving Mohammed um, two choices of death. Is either he want to be beheaded or stoned to death. But the judge didn't offer Mohammed um, to be shot um, to be shot. You understand? Because that's the form of death, you know, you know, they could shoot him. But hey, now when you come to the Muslim world, they don't play uh, these people, you know, you're talking about barbaric, you know, when they're killing people, you know, beheaded them, uh, but, uh, that's all they do. But, you know, you have to give them credit, you know, when they come on to the, um, their culture and their religion, and these people, you know, they take it. They're, these people are, they're, they're very, very fragile, you know, so you have to be careful what they say or do um, to their religion, you know, that they will hurt you, you know, they will kill you, you understand? I, I don't know if you remember that um, in the 80s, there was a man, um, um, a journalist, a, a writer that write, wrote a book, and he ran and put out a hit him, you know, and he has to be a Salomon, he has to put um, a security beef up around him for years, he, he wants to be, you understand? So, you know, these people don't play when they come on to Islam, you understand? So, the director, the deputy district public prosecutor, Said Anis Shah, told reporter, the accused got a very light sentence of the crime of blasphemy. So imagine, <laughs> you know, sometimes you have to make a bad thing and, and laugh, you know. So imagine you'll be sentenced to death and the prosecutor is saying it's, and it's, the sentence is very light. And it's death tonight, it's a death penalty, and he's saying it's very like, hey, if welcome to the Muslim world. In his defense, Mohammed al Wahhabi, 33, suffered from chronic flat to lens, a real medical condition. Uh, uh, you know, he argued as, as no liar would take his case. And the reason why no liar would take his case, any liar took up his case would be crazy enough to bet his career and his life on this issue because 
if if his client as in this case the lawyer will face persecution and possibly the same fate as his client admit legal expert andrew jones a middle eastern uh, expert so you know andrew jones you do have the accent andrew jones is from the western just his first and last name you know that he's not from the middle east but he's telling me that he's a middle eastern uh, expert so Mohammed did not contest the judgment and he even said that the decision was fair and that he hoped Allah would be gracious enough to pardon him for his sinful and blasphemous actions. Uh, yeah, well, look, stick up in. Imagine you've been sentenced to death and you are telling the people that the boy quota is lenient and you are and stuff like that. A one life you have, you know. One life I don't know, nobody wants two or three like that. The only person who ever come on earth and show you that he has more than one life was Jesus Christ, the Son of God. I did not witness it, but it's based on what it's written in the Bible. And if you believe in God, that is what is written right there. So we're not, you know, this is not a thing for me to debate with anyone because I did not write the Bible and I was I did not witness when Jesus Christ has risen from the dead. But I know that he's Lord. Yes. So um, you know, so as Muhammad said, that he is very, you know, is gracious enough to pardon, asking Allah to pardon him for his sinful actions, for his blasphemy. Muhammad also admitted that he put tamtam in his rectum. Yes, and most people do not understand what is what is rectum because you got to understand that most people IQ is very limited. In rectum, they be like wondering. Yeah, rectum is the anus. Uh, you know, back in my culture, they say it's the body, body wall. That's where the excretion of waste product from the from the body that the body doesn't use. That's where you know the um, the bicep and the the and the gay guys you know put their you know their plumbing. You understand? You know. So Muhammad admitted that he put tampon in his rectum several times in a desperate attempt to mask the noise and order. So a disgraceful and insidious act they don't declare visibly disgusting. Because in the Arab world, you know, in the world, you know, when it comes down to um, being a homosexual, um, the only cure that they have for you, you know, is that you know they string up alive and in a public square they execute these people are barbaric, you know. And guess what? The difference with these people and the people from the West and other part of the world. These people do not want to be rich. They rather to be rich in their culture and religion than to be rich and have all these fancy cars, houses and gadgets. They don't care about that. All they care about is Allah. And these are the people, you know, it doesn't matter how you kill them, they're still coming at you. You understand? So because they believe in their God and what, you know, all the laws that have been passed by Allah. You understand? So you know, Muslims are not allowed to insert object inside their anus. Not even a finger. That means say, according to Muslim, Muslim um, culture and their laws, no Muslim man is allowed to put anything in a foreign object or any plumbing thing in the rectum. Uh, the anus are in Jamaican thing, body wall. You're yeah, not allowed to do that. You understand the Quran, the Quran forbids it said the judge but in the Bible the Bible don't even speak about that because the Bible speak in regards to act like this as being abominable and leave it because you know speak about that but that's you know we're talking about this most this Pakistani man who was sentenced to death for 40 in a mass as a judge I must set an example for other Muslims so based on what Muhammad did, because he put the tampon in his rectum, you understand, to cut down on the noise and the smell, but it didn't work, you know. So the judge is telling him that this is unacceptable under Sharia law, he concluded. Muhammad admitted to the judge that he has failed his God, that is Allah, and he's failed his religion, that is Islam, and the people, and was sorry for what he has done. And asked for his two wives and seven children mercy in court and thank the judge for his word. So, you know, in the Muslim world, you know, when he committed certain act, 
a certain crime according to Sharia law. It does not affect only you, you know, or your wife or your children, you know. Or these people don't pay any cards. It's just like the Bible says, boy, the sin of the parents will follow the second and third generation. But in in Islam, it's not like that, you know. It doesn't follow, you know. They are sentenced at the same time as the perpetrator. But I know that most people that's watching this video, they don't even read this part. And wondering, why is this true? Oh, can you be, oh, no, is the really kill, execute, um, kill this man, sentence him to death for 14 in a month during Ramadan? Well, if you want to know if it's real, you understand? You know, just let me know, because I have a bridge to sell you. Uh, that take you from here, straight to, you can drive from here to China. But look, you know that majority of people on this, on this, in this world, like, uh, attention span is five minutes, like five seconds, like a goldfish. So that's why I made this video to see who will watch it and debunk it as false. You understand? I can tell you that there is no truth. Uh, there is no truth to the to the video itself. That I am doing, but just to show you how sensational it can spread because a lot of people watching it right now. You know, from the city headline and they believe it you know because this is the internet and everything on the internet is true and most people do not understand that the internet is where conspiracies on live and breathe and they travel faster than any other thing and this video is one of them yeah so you know we have received several requests um you know from various members of the jamaica young police audience and we know that these members that are making these requests are new members, you know, and we don't we believe in treating people equally. So you know, shortening the length of videos to accommodate the attention spans of specific audience segment is understandable, especially in an educational and informative context. However, it is crucial to balance brevity with effectively delivering the necessary content. So, you know, um, the reason why, you know, we're addressing this issue, you know, why maintaining the education and informative goal of our channel, when we say our, because this channel you know, is not just so yours truly, you know, it's all of us, because if it was just yours truly, that means we'll be talking to, I'll be talking to myself. So that's why it's us. This is a collective thing. We want back Jamaica, we want back our country, Team Jamaica. So, you know, segmentation, you know, break longer videos into short and shorter segments or episodes focusing on specific topics or aspects of the subject matter. You know, so this allows viewers to digest the content in smaller, more manageable chunks. So we just want you, our loyal viewers and subscribers, to let us know what you, what you, you think. Instead of an hour video, we get 30 minutes because, you know, some people, um, based on one and two, look at things, them attention span or them just not have a time or them are because them see the YouTube as entertainment, but we do not see it as that because what we are doing is that entertainment. It's a serious life thing, life and death thing. And you, yes, and you, you guys have seen you know, when we say see, you can't see, but they hear the dead threats them. In live and living colors, we'll let you guys hear them. Many, several. We have been receiving dead threats from the get-go. And we're still here. As we say, you know, when somebody come, you make sure you come with your identification, your next of kin, so that them can, you know. So you make sure you come with your driver's license if you're in America. If you're one of the, what them call it, border man. <laughs> Boy, may I tell you, you know, hey, Jamaican people are easy. You know, you know say the people that may come across in Mexico border. I was told, you know, that when these people are in dancing, you know, you know them, you know, them wear the tight jeans, them. Them call them border, border, Jamaican. <laughs> may I tell you, I don't know how them come by that. So visual is, aids, you know, incorporate visuals such as diagram, charts, and animation to convey information more effect efficiently and engage viewers visually. So that's why one of the main reasons why we use um, thumbnails 
it's a way to impart information to you. That's why we're telling you, always look, look at your LCD. Don't just listen, but you will see it because there's more information there. Although the information on the LCD itself, on the thumbnail, is also in the content itself, so to reinforce what you're hearing. Because we don't know everything, you know. We learn from even the audience members. Yes. And we can tell you that. Look here, I will tell you this. Because nobody feels that we are not a man baby over here, so, you know. Yeah. Any criticism, we take it to art. When we say we take it to art, yeah, we act on it. Because if people, like, we have a bridge in England, when I, we just I use him name, Reed. Yeah, man, and may I tell you, say, he's a very engaged man, you know. And may I tell you, say, him call, we, him call we all the time. We talk to him on the phone even sometime, and him just tell me, real mama, papa, truth. And we appreciate it. Others text me on them thing, and they say, boy, just open her. You know, we don't get you upset. We say, no, look here. Any criticism, constructive or otherwise, we still handle it. We are no man baby over here, sir. No. Because we're not perfect, you know. We know trolls different from the people who mean the channel well and want to see a better Jamaica. Because that's all we want, you know. We don't want nothing else, you know. We tell people already, say, our goal, our motive is not money. Yes, we are not the money. You understand? We just want our country. We just want back Jamaica. We want it back from these people, these 63 people. We don't talk about a little gun boy. Now, once we get back Jamaica from these 63 people, when we say get it back, we are talk about them changing mindset. Once you have laws, you know, we have teeth. You understand? That's how it all work. So clear and concise del delivery. So, you know, we are, we are mindful of the pace of speech and avoid unnecessary tangents. Oh, we are very guilty of repetitions. We don't have to lie. We're very guilty of that. Reason being, repetition, you know, that's how Jamaicans learn. Whether or not you want to believe it, yeah. Most of our people, in you know, a repetition, I saw them learn things. If you don't repeat it, they don't, they don't remember. And we focus on delivering information succinctly while providing sufficient context. Whenever I go to a brighter school, whenever I go to Harvard or Princeton or them university, yeah, we go Saint, we attend St. Mary's College, like Stuart, the one of the richest Jamaican, I in part, rest in peace. And yes, and although hey, we used to work with him too, you know, believe you me, good man. Can't say anything bad about him. Interactive elements. So we incorporate interactive elements. You know, um, we you but this the this you know, these are so that's why in time we ask you, you know, we ask if you ever experience certain things. Um, if you know it feels to lose a loved one to criminals or being violated by criminals. Yeah, this is a part of the interactive element. So we ask you. When we ask Paul, we ask Paul within um, the people who subscribe to YouTube and we do it on the Patreon. You understand? The question and sessions to encourage viewers' engagement and participation. It's just that um, we don't, we're not, we're not going to um, say that um, we, don't, we don't have a certain, um, a certain amount of um, members in our patrons and those who are there, we give thanks to them because they have something that is coming up. That they want a long time, very you know, long, long. It's from March, you know, we should have delivered, but why? Because so time can really fly, and we apologize for that. And we have something that we're gonna give them this Sunday, in which if you want to hear it, you're gonna hear a man. Yes, you're gonna hear of a man who was shot nine times. He was sent. Um, the shooter was sent by Bulby to kill him nine times. He was shot, and he survived. And you're going to hear that, but we're gonna pay, post it to pay to the Patreon members. Yeah, so we try to provide um, supplementary resources. So we offer additional materials such as articles, infographics, and downloadables guide for viewers who want to delve deeper into the topic. We encourage feedback from, from our audience to understand their preferences and areas of interest and tailor our content accordingly. So we know by implementing these strategies, you know, we can address complaints about video length while fulfilling our channel's education and informative objective. So we just ask you, members of the Jamaica Young Police Center, to yeah, make it known 
how long you want that video if you want because we are going with you know we are give you two options it's either 30 minutes or hour when i pass the hour sometimes we will but 30 minutes or hour so it all depends on the comments and the votes you understand you can you know you can just say 30 minutes one hour you understand you can put that first before you even write your comment i will read we read majority of your comments and you understand yes so just please let us know so the idea that humans have the same attention span as goldfish is a misconception so it's not really true but people just use it and them use it as a way of a you know because you know honestly you know that our jamaican people them really has trust me as you start talk with them after 15 seconds them right and i scratch them them elbow I scratch them them head them have problem with them head they don't rub them head them are look all over so that's why them say boy people have you know the, the goldfish um attention span so we are tell you something now i would like to give you data to you know microsoft study misinterpret misinterpreted a 2008 microsoft study reported an average human attention span of eight seconds down from 12. A Microsoft this is a this big guy you know, in 2000. However, the study focused on attention shifting due to the overwhelming amount of information people encountering online, not an inability to focus altogether. Goldfish can focus, you know. While a goldfish might not be writing a novel, they can exhibit focused attention on tasks like finding food or avoiding predators for extended periods. Hey, because look here, you know, anywhere you go in your life, you know, and the fittest, and the fittest survive, you know. So even all in the ocean, you know, even in the wild, you understand, the living thing, you know, they're preyed upon, you know, by the other animals in the animal kingdom, or even in the, in the ocean, you understand. So here are some fundamental reasons why people might have short attention span. Information overload. Yeah. Too much information. So in today's digital world, we are constantly bombarded with stimuli, email, notifications, and social media updates. This can make it difficult to focus on any one thing for a long time. So that's why some people complain about that because maybe our information overload. So we just want you, our loyal viewers and subscribers, to put it in the comment section. Make us know, let us know that yes, you want to reduce the time you want it from thir you want it either 30 minutes or one majority majority rule so we give you in a series as we have done before why although sometimes we in a series it's just that the information people love it you know but some people love it you know because we're telling you, you know, right now you're going to have some people who are going to be mad you know especially the truck driver them and guess what now some of the people them will want it less but i tell you so between me and you you wanna like for you know, you wanna like for hear what they are saying about the people them who want it long. You understand? <laughs> but that's the, the you know, you understand. Everyone is entitled to their own opinion. You understand? So multitasking myth. Our brain aren't good at multitasking. Whether or not you want to believe it, rapidly switching between tasks can make it harder to focus intensely on any of them. Some people, lack of interest. If someone finds a topic uninterested, their attention span will naturally wander. Yeah, so, like a man I watch something and you must say, uh, yeah, you see, you know, people and you, you know, you see people do some stupid things and all them things. You just know, you want, so you're going to just lose focus and you don't want to watch it no more. Individual differences. Some people are naturally more detail oriented and focused than others. Hey, yeah, some people, you know, believe you me, you know. I call some book. When them take it up, them now stop until them finish it. Yeah, that's all them love reading. So here are some things that you can do to um, improve your attention span. Minimize distractions. Turn off all. Turn off notifications. Silence your phone. Find a quiet workplace, a uh, workspace. Practice mindfulness. Yeah, if you have an iPhone. If you have no, if you have a iPhone and then you have a watch, uh, you know one of the Apple Watch them. There's a thing with the when you're mindfulness, you know, where you can meditate, deep breath and all kind of thing for a minute. 
so you can do meditating and it can help train your brain to focus on present moment and re resist distraction. That's how it is. Take breaks. Get up and move around every 20 to 30 minutes to avoid mental fatigue. So don't just sit one place and, uh, uh, yeah. Every 30, 20 to 30 minutes you get up, avoid fatigue. So if, you know, your, your phone or your TV or whatever, yeah, you don't just, you just get up and walk around. You know, at least, I, you know, while say I listen, but don't make mental fatigue. Um, sweeping, you know. Prioritize your sleep. Get enough sleep is essential for cognitive function and focus. If you don't get enough sleep in here, you get grumpy and all them things. That's why some people get irritable easily. When I'm on irritable and you can't see, just looking at somebody's face, you can't know they not get enough sleep. Yeah, that, that's how it is. You understand? Find your interest. When you're engaged engage with a task, staying focused is easier. So, you have some people, you know, um, things that are uninterested attract them more than things that is interesting. Not to you, but not to you, but to them. Like for, you know, you have m m most people, especially who listen, the Jamaica Young Police Channel, and some of them are like hooked. You have a, hey, trust me, you have, some, you have some viewers and subscribers that them have the contact number for the Jamaica Young Police Channel. If one day I want to post a video, may I tell you, them, them bombard with phone, with voice note and you know say so why it's like you know why you know give me nothing to the Chris or what happened if I'm a little something and you understand it's just food for the brain because they know that what we're giving them is not quantity it's quality so while our attention stand might be our attention might be challenged in a world filled with distractions it is not the same as goldfish so I always remember that so by understanding the factors that impact focus and taking steps to improve it, we can all learn to concentrate better. So we are going down to the meat of the matter now. About this brother now where them say, um, them are sentenced him to death. Hello, we told you earlier you know, that there's no truth to it. You understand? And that's why we do it, to see how many views we all get for it, to show you, you know, how propaganda can spread. So even if a fart is loud, it still wouldn't warrant a death sentence in any Muslim majority country or under Islamic law. So that wouldn't happen. Um, while fatalence might be considered impolite or disrespectful in specific cultural or religious contexts, it is not considered a crime deserving such a severe punishment. Islamic legal system of clear guidelines are determined punishment based on justice proportionality and mercy. Minor offenses like farting, regardless of volumes, would not meet the criteria for a capital offense. It's crucial to differentiate between cultural taboos, social norms, and actual legal consequences. So that now go, you now go up, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, a man fart and them thing that now go, them now go kill him in a Muslim world. Although, you know, in the West, they could be like, say, boy, Muslims are some crazy people. Them, they're not crazy, you know, people that are passionate about their religion. And they're very skeptical and suspicious of the West, which they have all right. Remember, I said, them and the West were friends, you know, before they become enemies. Because that's how, you know, in our, where most black people are from, which is Africa, and them call some part of the Middle East, that's our ancestral land, you know, because the Arabs are not from there. You know, so the Arabs are mixed with white, and that's how you have all of these people, the Arabs. But them say they're not black, but they are black people. Yeah, even they must say them white, believe you me. So, uh, you know, a black man calling himself white is like saying wet rain. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's just, just madness, may I tell you. So remember, you know, say it's not true, you know, that, no, it, that's not true for farting. Farting in a mass, while it may be considered disrespectful or impolite, it's not a crime punished by death in any Muslim majority country or under Islamic law. So, you know, the Islamic legal system have specific criteria for determining punishments and minor offence would not warrant the severe punishment. So, you know, it's always good for verifying information from credible sources is essential before accepting it as accurate. 
So that's why we do it, you know, because we know say yeah, some people, you know, believe, you know. Yeah, we are telling you about the Gaza Nation people, them, man. People them from the PMP criminal organization. Because they don't know, read, you know, everything them, I may tell you, everything with them sit on the internet, they believe, you know. Because they're on the internet and them don't know say propaganda, enough, plenty of propaganda is on the internet and propaganda website. So expanding attention span involves practice and patience. So we are telling about some strategy that might help. Practice mindfulness. Mindfulness, mediation can train your brain to focus on present moment, which can improve your attention span over time. Set realistic goals. Start short periods of focus, attention, and gradually increase the duration as you build your ability to concentrate. Limit distractions. Distractions. Identify and minimize distraction in your environment, such as turning off all your phone and all these things. You know, so you know these things are important. So remember, you know, by incorporating these strategies into daily routine and be patient with yourself, you can gradually expand your attention span over time. So by doing all of these things that we are telling you, you can improve your attention span and become a better person. Because remember, you know, none of us is just you know, no, but no, there's no human being that born genius. It's by through practice and all of these things. You understand? And, you know, we appreciate the support that we have been getting from the audience members at the Jamaica Young Police Center. So let's continue. And I will continue to give you this exceptional contents over here. So have yourself a beautiful day. Jamaica Young Police Channel out.